Welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Alright, welcome back to our physical jog series. Okay, we're going to be moving on to the next part of our uh, physical jog um, lecture series. Okay, moving on to mass movements, right? We've already gone through um, basically the majority of what physical jog is. Uh, in all of my previous videos, okay, we've already gone through like over 20 parts okay, worth of physical jog uh, content, right? So go and check those out. Okay, I've gone through ATMO, your atmospheric uh, circulation, your Hades cell, ITCZ, um, all the way down to rivers, okay, and then your cars your alien landscape, right? So this part of the mass movements, okay, I've, I've left it towards, I mean, I've left it, okay, towards this part, uh, closer towards the end of the, of the series because um, I feel that it is actually quite simple, okay, once you actually get it. And um, it's definitely going to be a shorter part, okay, to this entire syllabus, right? So mass, move, uh, mass movements, I'll break it down into two parts. This part on part 27, okay, I'll go through what the mechanisms behind mass movements as well as what are the different types okay, of mass movements. And then in your next part, part 28, I will be covering more on the factors okay, that affect mass movements as well as what impacts okay, do mass movements have. All right, so go ahead and uh, make sure you stay tuned for the two videos. Right, it's going to be very, very important. And math, mass movements is really a topic you want to make sure that you can secure the marks in okay, if it does come up because it is actually very, very simple to answer and it's uh, very easy to understand. Okay, it's very straightforward. Alright, so what is the definition of mass movement? So it's basically the detachment of downward mo uh, downslope movement of weathered and eroded materials due to the gravitational force of the materials themselves. Okay, so this can be caused by internal factors or it can be caused by external factors resulting in mass movements. That one we'll go through in a later part, next part of the um, of the next video. So angle of repose is basically a concept that you first need to know. Okay, the angle of repose is the steepest angle at which a sloping surface formed of weather and eroded material is stable. So essentially, this angle of repose is the it's like it's kind of like a critical angle, right? It is where um should it go beyond this angle of repose, okay, the mass uh, movement um, is going to occur, right? The slope will definitely fail. So the slope at equilibrium is rested at a safe angle of repose. When the slope is at a high angle of repose, okay, this equilibrium occurs, resulting in the occurrence of a mass movement. Okay, anything that is a considered high angle of repose would be something that, let is, let's say, is more than 90 degrees. Okay, when it's almost vertical, okay, chances are it's going to be um, quite disastrous, okay, as compared to something that is uh, made out of a very, very low angle of repose, meaning that... Um, um, it's kind of like a 45 degree angle, you think of it. Okay, it's very, very gentle. It's a very gentle slope. Chances are there um, is going to be greater equilibrium um, amongst all the different materials that mix up that slope. So, when you look at the mechanisms of mass movements, there are two main mechanisms they need to know of. Shear stress and shear strength. Right? So, shear strength, okay, think of strength, right? Whenever you're building strength, it's always a good thing. Okay, but then if you are under a lot of stress, it's usually a bad thing. Okay, so that's one thing that you want to uh, maybe use, okay, to actually help you remember clearer, okay? Because later on when you look at factor of safety, you need to make sure you take these two um, mechanisms into account. So, shear stress is basically the function of gravity pulling the object downwards. Then, increase, okay, in shear stress, uh, for example, through excessive rainfall, okay, through certain um, uh, infrastructure that's built along the slope will add weight okay, to the slope. Okay, some of you guys who have learned physics before, you know that weight um, will actually essentially uh, pull the overall gravitational force or increase the overall gravitational force, right? So this will definitely cause increased stress, right? It's a physics concept, right? So a steeper slope angle will increase the shear stress. Okay, um, that means a larger angle of repose. Okay, on the other hand, shear strength is basically the resistance of an object to move downhill, right? You're trying to build strength. So you're resisting, okay, to trying um, or, or of an object, okay, to actually move downwards, down, down the hill. So when there is friction, okay, or higher cohesiveness, okay, that helps in holding the particles in place, definitely your shear strength would increase as well. All right, so we're going to be looking at these two mechanisms here. And when you combine them, okay, um, you would get this thing called the factor of safety. Okay, in short, we'd call it FS. So the factor of safety is basically equivalent to the shear strength over the shear stress. Okay, so if we look at this concept real quick. All right, so the factor of safety equals to the strength, so shear strength over the, sh the shear stress. Okay, when you have got a factor of safety that is less than 1, you would have slope failure. When it's more than 1.2, the slope is stable. Okay, anything in between, um, it is still uh, has the possibility of becoming a slope failure. Okay, so we're looking at these two um, numbers over here. So in order to achieve a factor of safety that's less than 1, okay, you have to be able to increase your shear strength and reduce your shear stress, okay? Because for instance, if let's say we're looking at a fraction, right? Let's say two over one, this would give you a two. If you're looking at a fraction uh, that is, let's say three over four, 
is to give you 0 0.75. So all in all, right, you realize that in order for a soap to be stable, definitely you need to increase your shear strength and reduce your shear stress. Okay, and likewise, so the opposite will occur for a slope failure. Okay, but you need to be able to uh, reduce when there is a reduction in your shear strength and then increase in your shear stress. This will lead to an overall slope failure. Alright, so just take note, okay, it's basically common sense as well, okay, you realize that if there's more stress added to your slope, definitely the slope is higher, uh, has a higher chance of failing as compared to if you strengthen it instead, right, it's definitely not going to fail as easily. Alright, so mass, mass movements occur when there is a drop in shear strength and a rise in shear stress, alright, like I've just covered. So just take note, this is the main mechanism. Okay, you always want to be talking about this in your introduction, in your body paragraphs as far as possible, okay, to give us this concept okay, of what this factor of safety is, okay, and what it is defined as, which is your shear strength over shear stress. So when there is an increase in your strength and a reduction in your stress, definitely the slope will be more stable. When there is an increase in your stress and a reduction in strength, your slope will become weaker, it's going to like uh it's going is likely going to fail instead. So, then we move on to the types of mass movements, right? In your syllabus, they would give you in your syllabus document, okay, you guys would see things like um, having to look at the different types of mass movements in terms of your heave, uh, slides, uh, uh, rotational slips, right? All these kind of different types of mass movements. Okay, we'll look at it uh, very specifically, okay, in this case, um, what are the different, the different falls, the different slides, different heaves, different creeps, all right? So the first one you have over here is going to be rock fall, or some people may call it rock topple. Okay, I think rock fall is the better one to go with. Okay, since the syllabus gives it as uh, a fall. Um, okay, so rock fragments basically are detached by gradual processes such as frost shattering and earthquakes. So right, frost shattering is a physical weathering process that I've gone through before in my physical weathering video. Uh, you can go and check it out if you want. Okay, I leave in the in the description below and on the top right corner of the screen. Go check out what frost weathering is all about. Okay, it's important or frost shattering in this case. So over time, okay, when this kind of a process occurs, okay, um, constant freezing and thawing, freezing, thawing, um, foreshadowing actually takes place in between the crevices and the cracks of the rocks. Okay, so this can actually cause the rock fragments to detach okay, over time. Earthquakes can also cause, um, um, of course, it will cause uh, disequilibrium to occur, right? Because of the shaking, um, it will cause your rocks to uh, rub against each other, sort of, and, and, and friction, the friction will cause them to separate as well. So angular debris will actually collect at a slope base to form this thing called a scree or talus. So it's basically a characteristic of a rock fall, okay, a scree. So a steep cliff face is also formed, okay. So overall, your characteristics of a rock fall is that there is low to no water content and it occurs at very high speeds. Okay, usually the angle of repose is also extremely high, okay, in order for rock falls to occur. So think of rock falls as kind of like a mountain like this. Basically, it's just huge boulders that's just falling to the bottom over here and forming this thing called a scree, okay, when the... um the debris actually drops to the floor and cracks and then becomes all these angular rocks, rock fragments. Alright, then you look at the next mass movement. Okay, we've got landslides and rock slides. So these are a type of slides, okay, um, as the, the name the name says. So this is when coherent materials, okay, let's say large masses of rock or debris, uh, move across a very clearly defined sliding plane. Okay, think of a sliding plane as like a like a slide, right? Like a you know playground slide. Okay, let's basically what a sliding plane is. So basically the rocks, okay or the, the landmass okay, are basically just sliding downwards. So it's common among slopes of rocks with bedding planes. So that means a lot of um, uh, basically kind of like lines in between them. Okay, bedding planes. Uh, so this allows for a permeable surface okay, and high infiltration of water, which actually lubricates the surface. Okay, um, As you guys have learned before, what bedding planes are actually like, okay, they are basically the tiny little crevices okay, and um, basically... Um, they allow a lot of, uh, it's basically like a lot of cracks, cracks and fissures, right? Another word for it is called fissures. So this actually allows for a lot of water to infiltrate in. I've already gone through all this before, right? So go and check out my previous uh, physical job videos if you're still unsure on these concepts. And they basically allow water to infiltrate. Okay, water infiltrates uh, the permeable surface, okay, it actually lubricates okay, all the materials inside. So this can cause the large uh, land mass or the, the rock mass to actually detach instead. Okay, so this can, uh, the characteristic scale of a landslide or rock slide is basically that it has a high water content and it occurs at very, very high speeds. Alright, so these are basically the main characteristics of these uh, landslides. 
Alright, the next type of a slide we have is a rotational slip or otherwise known as a slump. Okay, so this is concave in shape. Okay, we'll look at an example after this. Um, it usually occurs in weaker rocks, okay, such as clay or in unconsolidated sediment that has become saturated with rainwater. So it's very, very um, high in water content. So the weight of the rainwater and um, sliding landmass, they occur at very, very high speeds. And it is defined, okay, the characteristic that defines it is that it has a curved sliding plane. So it's kind of like curved like this with a head, a foot, and a toe. Okay, a head is on top, we'll see later on, the foot and the toe is at the bottom, and it has a very, very high moisture content. So if you look at an example over here, okay, this is kind of like how a rotational slip looks like. All right, so the the head, okay, is basically at the top, the toe is at the bottom, okay, the foot you can also, is somewhere it's around at the bottom is over here as well. Okay, and this is how a rotational slip looks like, okay, basically has got this very, very curved sliding plane that looks like this. Uh, and the failed land mass, um, all these scarp crown minus scarps, okay, you don't have to be too um, mindful of them, okay? Essentially what happens is that the failed land mass would then move downwards like this. Alright, so this is how the rotational slip looks like. Um, and in real life, it can be very, very um, devastating, okay? Because the whole thing can kind of like just concave in. It, you notice it concave inwards and it will just slide downwards. So this is what a rotational slip is... Um, characteristic of, okay, and how it looks like, okay, it's got a clearly defined sliding plane still, but has a high moisture content and has this very, very cool looking like curved sliding plane. Alright, we look at mud flow next, okay, mud flow is a type of a flow, right, mud flow. Okay, so this is when soil or weaker rocks become saturated once again and they flow downhill, okay, but we're looking at very, very um, muddy and very, very uh, like viscous, almost viscous like um, field land masses. So causes the field land mass or slope to have a lope effect. Okay, as the bottom layers in contact with the sliding plane, it's slowed down due to friction. Okay, when mud uh, or when all these unconsolidated materials okay, are saturated with water, what happens is that because they are still, they are still rock fragments, right? they are still um, unconsolidated material that's still existing within, okay, it will actually cause the bottom, okay, the bottom layer, Okay, to continue to cause a lot of friction between the surface. So this is what actually causes um, the bottom part, the bottom layers to actually slow down. So when it slows down, okay, we'll see an example later once again. Okay, it will actually cause this thing called a lobe effect. Okay, I'll go through what this is in the next slide. So essentially what is characteristic of a mud flow is it has got a watery surface, structureless filled landmass. Okay, there is no sliding plane. Okay, it's just a whole thing that's just running downhill. Right, with high water content and occurs at slow to fast speeds depending on the water content. All right, so here's what I mean by a lobe effect. Okay, the lobe is essentially this area over here, right? So what happens is that at the bottom layer, okay, you can't really see it over here, but if you look at the cross section, the mud flow, okay, or the mud that's actually moving over there, the unconsolidated material, is actually moving at a very, very slow pace. Okay, what happens is that as it goes from up, hill to downhill, okay, it moves down very fast, but the bottom layer, because of the friction, okay, will continue to move at a very slow speed. So it kind of like causes this delay, right, in the, the way um, the whole thing is moving, hence causing this thing called a lobe effect. Alright, so this is just something to take note of. Okay, you can always go and research online, okay, if you want to know more about what a lobe effect is. Alright, the next one we have is a called the solid fluxion. Okay, this is a type of a flow as well. So this is when during winter time, okay, when the slope is frozen, um, what happens is that the entire slope, okay, all the materials are basically kind of like ice, right? We've got even if you've got water infiltrating, it's basically going to freeze. The materials are all very, very kind of like hard stuck together. But when it comes back to summer, okay, what happens is that the surface layer will melt. Okay, and this causes the soil to be saturated with water. Okay, the water that was pre-existing that was frozen during the winter time. Okay, during your uh, winter, your colder periods. Okay, so the bottom layer will basically act as an impermeable layer. Okay, a sliding plane because only the top surface would actually evaporate during summertime. The bottom layer will still remain, right? Because uh, it is still protected by the top layer, which is going to be evaporating into ice. Um, uh, evaporating to water, sorry, while well, the bottom layer is still going to be a layer of um, ice, okay? possibly ice, possibly made out of se several different um, impurities that make up um, a slightly more impermeable layer. So this results in solid fluxion lobes. Um, it, has a, it has a defined sliding plane okay, because of that 
impermeable layer and may have a high water content okay, because of the water that is melting during summer but it occurs at very very low speeds right um, it takes time right for the water and for the different layers to actually start to melt okay because all this is built up over time by the winter season right so this is a instance where we have got a mass movement which may not be as impactful but it definitely um, is still considered a slope failure okay because um, of uh, the breakdown in terms of your um, overall field or your overall land mass that is found um, in your slope all right next is soil creep soil creep is basically the most insignificant one okay it's a creep of course um, and it occurs extremely slow Okay, so it usually occurs, okay, or signs of it occurring, okay, because it's so hard, it's so slow to actually um, reveal that it's happening, okay, is when the, you see tilted infrastructure. So you see your lamps or your street lights, okay, becoming tilted. So this usually occurs, okay, because of alternate heating and cooling or wetting and drying of materials. So it could be areas with extremely um, erratic and seasonal climates, right? So this causes um, solid fl- uh, soil creep, sorry to actually occur over time here okay, by the alternate drying and heating or uh, cooling um, as well as wetting and drying uh, will actually cause these materials to slowly fade soft um, and causes the overall land or the overall slope okay, to become weaker over time right? the materials will start to uh, break down okay, in terms of its geologic properties and this causes anything that is built on it to slowly um, over time, okay, to actually weaken in terms of its foundation, okay, because the ground is essentially weakening. All right, so this can cause the infrastructure to become tilted. Um, characteristic of it is that it's low to moderate water content, and it occurs at extremely low, uh, slow speeds. Right, usually you, you take years just to realize that um, soil creep is happening. So this one I would say is one of the least uh, impactful mass movements and it's definitely not very important okay the only sign that you can actually tell is when there is tilted infrastructure which um re- is resulted from your land mass here okay, a slope becoming weaker in terms of its materials so that is all of the mass movements that you need to know for this first part okay so we move on to our exam requirements so firstly you must be able to explain the factor of safety and the angle of repose these are the two main concepts of mass movements they need to know shear stress and shear strength are part of factor of safety so you have to go and know those two mechanisms as well explain the various types of mass movements you may be required to draw okay things like a lobe okay the entire bottom part uh how how it looks a bit circular and, and a bit sunken in um and then you may be required to draw a curve sliding plane okay rotational slip so make sure you know what are the characteristics okay of each of the different mass movements and use the types of mass movements as examples in conjunction with the factors and effects of the mass movements that I'll be explaining in the next part, part 28 of our physical jog series. Alright, so this part, okay, I hope that um, uh, you guys understand okay, what the basics of your mass movements are. Okay, you can always go and search for clearer examples online. There are tons of different examples that I recommend you go and research okay, because you need to have case studies when it comes to geography. Uh, so these are just several examples okay, that um, or more of the mechanics okay, that actually happen behind a mass movement okay these are what will make up your explanation your causal links okay when it comes to explaining okay and determining which factor could be the most important which we'll go to later on in the next part okay for instance climate okay because most of your mass movements may actually require water content to even um happen so we'll look at all these different factors in the next part this part go and understand what the different mass movements are what are their different characteristics that's the most crucial and after that later on in the next part we'll see how we can apply them to the different factors um of that actually do affect mass movements all right so um yes that's all i have actually for this part on part 27 physical geography mass movements part one so make sure you stay tuned for the next part i'll have it out soon in, a, in maybe uh in the next week or so uh if not that's actually all i have okay if you have any questions you can always leave in the comment section below i will answer them or if you have um learn something and you do enjoy and like this video okay be sure to give me a like as well as subscribe to the channel it's free it doesn't cost you anything you just need to hit that button and we are done with that process all right so if not everything else is the same uh if you have any questions you can always just throw them at me all right? i'll answer them for you uh if not that is all i have i'll see you guys in the next one keep studying hard and have a good one Bye bye